back to another video. We're back with the Bible study Saturdays. We have Brother Jill and welcoming back Brother Jave. He was absent for two weeks, but he had good reasoning. Uh, he's a married man now, and we pray, that, we pray that in God it will be a successful marriage, bring a lot of kids and a lot of wonderful hopes and joys. Right, so last week we um, did the other half of John chapter 3, verses 22 going to 36. And just to like give you of what kind of like happened in that chapter, uh, John humbled himself before Jesus. John didn't call himself Jesus and kept telling people that he wasn't Jesus. Uh, John and Jesus are cousin. The bride is Jesus and the groom is the church, which is the people. And Jesus have four disciples. Now we're going to dwell into um, John chapter 4. Oh, and before we do that, we're going to start off with a prayer by Brother Javi since he's back. And then the end of prayer, I'll do it. All right, sound good. Let's get it. Father, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you, God, for another day that you have allowed us to see. We pray, God, as we, we thank you, God, for this opportunity, oh God, to gather on Zoom and just study your word. As we go forth, we pray, oh God, that you open up our minds. We pray that we'll be receptive to what we discuss and what you reveal to us. So God, we pray for revelation. We pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And oh God, your word requires a decision. And so whatever it is that you lead us to do, we pray oh, by your Holy Spirit, you'll help us to make the right decision. Help us to be hearers, not just hearers of, hearers of your word, but doers of your word as well. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Chapter 3, verse 30. Really big, really big. Right? You didn't mention that part. You just said that John humbled himself. Right? But yeah, learn really big in chapter 3, verse 30 is he must increase, but I must decrease. Decrease, right? Always remember that, right? Um, and you remember what that meant, right? Let me move out of the way. And, and let God take over. That's it. All right, so let's get right into it. Chapter 4. When, therefore, the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sakar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. It was about the sixth hour. So just real quick to give you a history. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd have to go all the way back to Genesis, right, to learn about Jacob and his son Joseph. Um, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. All right. And Israel had, I believe, 13 kids. Or, yeah, he had 13 kids, one daughter. Or maybe it was 14. No, I think it was, I think it was 13. Because you 13, remember, right? it's 12 tribe of Israel. Now you got the other daughter that they didn't include as, like, a tribe. Yeah, right. So, so yeah, 13, yeah, 13, 12 of them were sons, and from the sons, you get the tribes. 12 tribes, yeah. yeah. Right? And one of his sons was Joseph. And so, um, Jacob gave his son Joseph this parcel of ground or a piece of land, right? And now, Jacob, well, now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary, he was tired from his journey, right? He just traveled from um Judea and now he's making his way to Galilee but he has to pass through Samaria um and he says it was the sixth hour All right um I think don't quote me but I think their time the first hour starts at like 6 a.m because they, they their their clock is like day I mean night then day and then that makes one day so if it's the sixth hour and the first and come on, y'all, 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 mathematicians out there. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's like noon. Let's call it noon. But then again, don't quote me. I gotta look that up and make sure. All right. So it's twelve o'clock. Let's just say, for example, it's twelve o'clock. He's traveling through the through the towns and he's tired, so he stops by this well where this where there's water. 
right? And we know the importance of water to the human body. So just keep that in mind as we read. Verse seven says, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. Now imagine God asking a human being for water. Something is about to happen, right? Because you know God could, God is water. God is life. He could give right. it himself. So verse 8 says, For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. You understand what he just said to her, Ezra? Nah. Okay. Yeah, listen, if we read him, bro, and you for any reason, like, yo, hold on, read that again, or tell me what I'm saying, please stop us, all right? Yeah. Okay. Jay, you want to break that down, what he said? My fault. I, I was reading something in my Bible. What verse did you just okay. go over? So, yeah, we, so, so seven, he says, there come a woman of Samaria to drink water, to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, give me drink. All right. So, you, you know what a well is, right? Um, yeah. Ezra, right. Yeah. Big hole in the ground where you get your water from, right? And it says, um, his disciples had, so his disciples, like, Imagine him traveling with his disciples, right? They're tired. Jesus like, all right, cool. I'm going to stop here at the well. I'm going to just chill here, right? And his disciples kept going into the town. They wanted to get some food to bring it back so they can just relax, have some lunch maybe. But Jesus, it looks like just by coincidence, he stopped by the well and chilled by himself and allowed everybody else to go on. But it was no coincidence. This woman from Samaria was coming out. Right. Now, you can see um, in verse 9, um, after Jesus asked her to give him something to drink, you see that Samaritans and Jews, which is what Jesus was considered to be, yeah. Samaritans and Jews, they don't mix. They don't talk right. to each other, right? So in verse, in verse 10, he says, Jesus said unto her, if you know the gift of God, and who it is that says to you, give me to drink, then you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. I'm Jesus. Yeah. With a Samaritan woman. Yeah. I'm Gio from America and you're Ezra from Guyana. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, give me some cook up or something or whatever, or pepper pot. I don't know what y'all call it, right? <laughs> And you like, huh? So it's just like you saying, yo, I'm like, yo, yo, Ezra, let me get some some foot in my soup. And you like, gee, are you bugging? You don't know nothing about that. You're American. You don't want nothing. It's like, it's like you know nothing about that. Is. <laughs> clearly, I don't know nothing about it. But the Samaritan woman is simply saying, we have no dealings with each other. We can't. Right. Jews and Samaritans don't mix. Like they just like, like not to like. It's like it's like it's like I don't know I don't know how to explain it, but just pretty pretty much historically they didn't combine with each other. Yeah, right? uh, you're right. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Um, your 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 uh your book has any notes on that? Yeah, yeah. So I, I wanted to um just paint the picture for E, well for for all of us. Um, and you hit it right on head when you were talking about the time. So it was around noon. Um, so in that area, um there were like two wells located outside the city on the main road, right? And it was twice each day, morning and evening, that woman would come out and draw water from the well. However, uh, this woman came at noon, right? So she, she went a completely different time from when the time, the, the customary time that everyone else would go, right? However, if you go back up in the beginning, um, Jesus said, I, I must go through my Samaria. So he already had this plan in his head. Yeah. He knew the woman would be there at that time. He, he purposed this whole thing, right? Um, so she came at noon 
And my Bible says probably to avoid people meeting, meeting people or running into other people because of her reputation. And her reputation is revealed um, in the next few verses. Right? So three things about this woman. Uh, she was a Samaritan, um, which is a member of a hated mixed race. Um, number two, she was known to be living in sin. And that sin is going to be revealed in the next few verses. Um, and three, she was in a public space. And the Bible says no Jewish man would talk to a woman in such circumstance, right? Um, but Jesus did. Right? And that goes to show that um, he's coming for everybody. Um, the sins, those that say they're not living in sin, the saved, the righteous, um, those that are far, far gone in their life that you would think have no hope of return, um, he's coming for everybody. So just wanted to paint that picture real quick um, and lay that backdrop for us as we go further. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, my mind has the same uh, note about Samaria. Um, it's a city in central Palestine, north of Judea and south of Galilee. The people from this area were despised by the Jews. So you got you got you got the picture now. You see what's happening? Yeah. Okay. Um, so Jesus is saying to her, she, he's like, like, she's concerned about a Jew asking a Samaritan for water, and a woman at that. Um, but Jesus is like, sis. If you only knew who it is that's asking you for water, then you yeah. would realize that it's not me who needs the water, but it's you who would be asking me for living water. Yeah. We'll figure out what the living water is. Go ahead, go ahead, Jay. Yeah, she was calling that in that social taboo that Jews, as you were saying, G and Jews and Samaritans um, can't speak. And so um, Jesus is offering this lady light, this woman light, but she is living in darkness and she can't see that. She can't see past that, that cultural norm or that social taboo to not speak um, to a person that's a Jew. That's tough. It's almost like, it's almost like you e going up to some, one of your friends who, who heard about some dude named Jesus, but they don't really know about him. And they're so caught up in you live in the world, you know, or or just like living in the dark of Jesus. Like they know nothing about him. They just heard about him. But then you come and you're like, you let me, you know, let me speak to you about God. And, you know, let me speak to you about Jesus. And and it's just like, what? Nah, I'm good. Uh, like they don't realize what you are about to do. You're about to change their lives for the right. rest of their lives. Right. Right. But they don't get it because they're stuck in the dark. They can't right. see Exactly. Another thing that, you know, we mentioned was that Jesus stopped at this well and he said he was wearied. So now we see the, the humanity of Jesus. Right. Jesus, too, was tired. Right? right. So if you put Jesus and you put Christ together, Jesus Christ, you see the humanity in Jesus. But then you see the, the deity, the, the, the divinity, the, the God head, you see Christ. So you put those together and you have Jesus Christ, right? Yeah, son of man, son of God. There you go. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, remember I told you how like water is, is something you really, really need in life to survive? Yeah. Like, you, you could, I think you could go a while without eating. Yeah. As long yeah. as you got water. Yeah. Probably, I, I, is it like a week or like less than a week? No, I think you can go. Some somebody, I, I can't remember. I read an article. I don't want to misquote it, but I think I think they was like the body could go. I think like forty days, like because they kept figuring out why did Jesus go forty days, and somebody looked into him like I think the, the body can go forty days without food before you die from starvation. Um, but water, I think you could only go like three like something, eight, like yeah, like three days or something like that. I think it is so. He's saying to her, I'm, I'm, if you knew who I was, if you recognize me, then you would be asking me for living water. Yeah. He's not talking about, he's using living water as almost like a, like a dual meaning, but 
he's saying this like like from a spiritual sense, mm-hmm. like living water. Like you would be asking me for life. He can he's 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 considering the Holy Spirit as living water, right? Something you need that's necessary for you to live the life that he wants us to live. Yeah. You're speaking symbolically. Right. There so you go. E, there, there are certain things in the Bible, you really got to read it. Um, some things are to be taken literally, like exactly as it said. Um, but then, so sometimes there's a lot of symbolism that's used, right? So sometimes you have to dig a little deeper. So as uh, Gio just said, um, that sim- symbolism of living water was in reference to the Holy Spirit. Right? That makes, that makes sense. Yeah. Don't, don't think that you answered the call of Jesus on your own. Like that entire thing was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. For you to hear the call, for you to answer the call, and for you to stay where you are and constantly seeking after God, that's all the Holy Spirit working in you. Okay. So we we it's a, it's an essential component of our Christian living. We need the Holy Spirit. Just like we need water to live as a human being, we need the Holy Spirit to live as a Christian. Absolutely. Okay, so um, <laughs> this reminds me of like when when pe- preachers <laughs> are preaching on the youth Sunday, and they speaking so divine, this huge this message that's like flying over people's heads. It's almost like what Jesus is doing right now, chapter ten. And uh, when Jesus, uh, and I say, when he had his 12 disciples, uh, and they're just talking, and, talk, and his youth, un- what are you talking about? Yeah, you are sleeping. <laughs> so, um, but what I, my original point was, Jesus is speaking to her in this profound way, like this, like this deep, like he's getting to the root of her issue. But she, she's like, I'm like, yo, dude, you got to break that down. I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Oh, kind of like um, in that chapter before. When, Nicodemus. Yeah, with Nicodemus. When God told him, I, feel, I don't remember exactly what he told him, but you know I what I'm talking about. Yeah, it says, it says in, in chapter three, he it's like. Deep, deep into the problem, like, like. Like Nicodemus was like, he was confused. <laughs> Nicodemus was so confused. I remember that. Yeah, and it's chapter, it's chapter three, verse two, Nicodemus says, for you are a teacher that come from God, for no man can do these miracles that you do, except God be with him. And Jesus is like, oh, you trying to question my authority. I got you. That's what Jesus says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus is like, what? He said, how can a man be born when he's old, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? So he knew what Nick, the angle Nicodemus was coming at, but he, right. he addressed the problem, you know? So Jesus is doing the same thing here. So verse 11, he says, The woman said unto him, Sir, I has nothing to draw with. She said, I have, I have nothing to draw the water that you want to drink, right? I, I don't have anything to draw with. And the well is deep. From where then hast thou that living water? Oh, no, she's saying you have nothing to drill with and the well is deep from when thou has that. Yeah. So she's like, Jesus says, if you knew who I was, you'd be asking me for living water. And the woman says, but you have like she she's not getting what he's saying. She's like, you have no bucket and anything to draw water and and the well is deep. How are you going to get access to the water? Right. Where where then is this living water that you speak of? Go ahead, Jay. No, no, go ahead. I, I was just just. Again, background, as you, he said, the, the well was deep. Um, I was just thinking about it. The well was, as my Bible says, over 100 feet deep. Mm. I'm just thinking about a woman lowering that rope, pulling up that, that bucket of water, how, how much work they had to do, right? And they, sometimes they went there twice a day, morning and evening, right? Um, but again, she, the, the, it also emphasizes the deep meaning of what Jesus is saying. Even though that well is physically deep, right? What, what Jesus is saying to her is so deep and so rich, she don't even realize it yet. It's going right over her head. <laughs> right over her head. 
Um, and she says, art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? That's crazy, Jay. So the Samaritan stemmed from the tribes? So we're saying, yeah. Yeah. So at what point did the Jews like break away from the Samaritans? I guess you got to look into that. I'll look into that, yeah. Yeah, I never realized that. So she's saying, she's saying to Jesus, are you greater than our father Jacob? Like, right, they, they consider Jacob to be... Was Jacob, like, Jew? Was he a Jew or Samaritan? Jew. Okay. Jacob is Israel. He gave them the well. So she thinks that... So Jacob, remember his name was changed to Israel. Israel yeah, yeah. had 12 sons. You got the nation of the nation of Israel, right? The 12, the 12 nations. Tribes. Mm-hmm. 12 tribes, right? Yeah. She is... Like, she is saying the reason why this well is here is because Jacob gave it to us. Like, Jacob put this well here. Jacob gave it to us. Jacob drank oh, okay. the well. Like, dude, are you greater than our father Jacob? So he still much, pulled up in the well. Yeah, like, she's still tripping over the well. And it's so crazy because she's, she's even actually caught up on culture. Like, like, the stories of the greatness that happened before her that was passed down. AKA the stories about Jesus that we learn on a Sunday, but we don't take the time to get to understand the history and open up this Bible out to get to know Jesus for ourselves. Mm-hmm. So she's caught up on, he say, she say stories from way back when, um, but she never took the time to figure out for herself. Right. Um, verse 13 says, Jesus answered and said unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water, shall thirst again. So whoever drink from this well that she's talking about, they're going to come back again and keep getting thirsty over and over and over. That's why they come twice a day. Why they come twice a day, right? But whoever drinketh of the water that I shall give shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Ezra, what in the world is Jesus talking about? So look, um, he's talking about like if you accept what God into your life, he'll like he'll stay with you. Like he'll stay with you. Like you won't have to be like come back. Like God, come back over here. Come like he'll he'll be with you forever. And do do that, and you staying with him, you're gonna have everlasting life. Compared to like a well, once you get water. You gonna be thirsty eventually. You gonna have to go back, but with God, He's just He's gonna be all there all the time. He's just gonna be all, there all the time, and He's gonna stay with you. Like He won't leave you or none of that. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I got from that. Yep. So, so and I remember we talk when He when He Jesus is talking about water. He's not talking about physical water. Yeah, right. no, I get that. About the spirit, right? Yeah, and the crazy part right here, she didn't even know, she still didn't know what he was talking about. Still tripping. Still. She, still, she like, oh, will I never run out? I'm not going yeah, to yeah, yeah. come to the well again. <laughs> She's still thinking about the physical nature. Yeah. Like, I don't got to come to the well twice again. I don't got to come outside. Give me that water. You know what I'm saying? It's like, she don't even understand the spiritual implication or the spiritual meaning of what Jesus is saying. This... This this somebody that preaches on Youth Sunday and really break it down like this. Like, like I don't want to come up here and preach over your head. I want to come in here and preach into your heart. Man, I want to get well, right into the nooks and crannies. Why are you talking about someone? Go right ahead. You could do that. Because I like the way you like, I like the way you preach. Cause it's mad common, like you really like dig deep into it. This is so good, man. This is so good. Yeah, yeah, this is a good part. This is, this is uh, a good part. <laughs> so the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw, right? So she's still tripping. Like, like she's still thinking, like, the wa- I'm going to come back to this water over and over again and keep drawing water. Right, right. And Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come here. And now Jesus is about to violate her, right? The woman answered and said, 
I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, you have said well. You, well, you have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and he whom you are with now is not your husband. And that saidest thou truly? The woman said unto him, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. That's that. Uh, we have. Hey, so we stopped up to like what was that? Twenty or twenty-one? Uh, we finished at twenty. But okay. um, yo, but why? Why he exposed her like that? Like you, you like. I felt that way. I felt when you said that. I, I felt that. I was like, wow, he really, he really, he really tore her business. Bruh, bruh, fishing rod. Boom, threw the threw the hook out. The bait was the water. She's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Give me this fucking water. Give me the water. Oh, got it. We bring it back in. Got her now. <laughs> Let me bring it back in. Imagine her face, though. I know her. Home boy talking about I'm water. Mad about that. Girl, drop. And he switched it up on. Her. He switched it up. He started on her. talking about her sin. Yeah. Imagine her face, like. <laughs> She's like, wait, what? The, what? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. We got this one minute. That what and you was doing? How the crazy part is he says that to her and then she tries to throw out some uh, distraction and starts talking about places of worship and the location of worship. That's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> are we not here to talk about that? <laughs> no, I understand it. And what Jesus is saying, if I'm going to give you this water, we first have to address the sin in your life. There, there has to be some cleaning up before you drink this water. Before I give you my water, before I give you what I got, you, you have to do something. Right? You, we have to address the sin in your life. Everybody just bow your head, close your eyes. We're just going to do the closeout prayer, and then I'm going to do my outro. Father, we thank you for the day that you have made. I rejoice in the God name. Father God, you're holy, you're worthy, you're mighty. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who is my provider. And all the people will say, Amen, God. We pray as we came together today as brothers to discuss your word. We pray that we have learned something important. We pray that we'll keep on doing this every single week to be able to grow spiritually and connect with each other and lift each other up to the fullest, God. We pray that you continue to reveal stuff through these words to us that we did not know, God. We pray that we'll learn more and also from this video, other people that's watching, I pray that they'll learn too, God. We pray um draw closer to you, God. And we we pray that you continue to work in us, God, work in us as brothers, work in us, God. We pray that we'll lift each other up and not bring each other down, God. We love you and thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, that's it for the video. Uh, if you're watching this, make sure you hit a like button. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, we'll be back next week with Bible Study Saturday. We're going to be doing the other half of John chapter 4. And see you guys. Like, subscribe, peace.